Okay, so we're working on 1045. Yes. So again, I want to try to use the same techniques. Although, like, whatever. <laughs> right? Although, like, whatever. Well, no, I think on this one, don't we ignore the alkene functional group because we're not dealing with it? In a sense. But you, want, you don't want to mess with it, right? So you want to do A. That's right. Because all the rest will mess with it, I think. That sounds like good analysis. Good. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's so eloquent. No, that's good. The MBS doesn't uh, mess with the, mess with the alkene. It's going to add to the beta. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's carbon. J. That's my guess. Because we want to kick off bromine and add the OH. Oh, no, but then you'd have the methanol. Thing. Wait, A and then? No, a is, no. MBS is first, though, right? No, I'm wrong. J would keep the CH3 group on, which we don't want. Yeah, you should be first. But if we add water? Because we want like the thing to come in and attack and then kick the bromine off. Yeah, water, right? Water will do it. Oh, how about H2S now? Because that's going to go to the double bond. How do we kick bromine off people? The nucleophile? I think it is this water. No, but we never have water, just do water. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well let's go through this. Now, um, still it's a good idea to start by putting in some numbers, although the numbers might not be too okay. crucial here. Of course you have to draw this correctly. So you have a double bond here. Yeah, it just breaks my habit. Yeah. So what's the suggestion for what we should add first? What should we add first to our starting material? Um, I put NBS. Sounds good. And what will be the intermediate that we get from adding NBS? Um, a radical and a bond. Right. Well, what will be the ultimate intermediate when the mechanism is done? Oh, the VR on the... One it will be this. Good. Yeah, yeah. So we don't even have to bother writing it down because that'll give us what we want. All right. Again, um, I don't know. Maybe to save time, we won't go through the mechanism. We just did the mechanism for NBS, yeah. the radical mechanism. But the ultimate reaction is quite simple. We're simply putting in the bromine, and what are we kicking off? A hydrogen. That's right. That's hard to see because it's a hidden hydrogen. But we really should have drawn that in. Put a squiggle on the bond you're breaking and a squiggle on the bond you're forming, even if it's just a carbon-hydrogen bond. So that's very good. How would we know to do this? Well, we have to say we are replacing a hydrogen with a bromine, and we really only know one way to do that, which is a allylic halogen, well, which is radical halogenation. This looks like allylic halogenation because we're working on the allylic carbon. And we know that the allylic halogenation reaction uses NBS. Usually they would put in a radical initiator, like um, heat. Like either um, however, I think the idea here is that oftentimes, even if you don't specifically put an initiator, there's maybe little traces of initiators in, in your glassware that you haven't cleaned off. So even without that, uh, but it looks like you need to know that your instructor here um, is not always going to give you the radical initiator, but they still clearly expect us to think of this as a radical mechanism when they use NBS. When they use NBS, we, we should think of that as a radical mechanism. So we'll do the radical mechanism, and we'll save time by skipping the mechanism and just saying this is the intermediate. So that's a good first step. How do we know we're doing that? because we're replacing a hydrogen with a bromine. That tells us that we're doing a radical halogenation. And we know it's allylic, because we're attacking the allylic carbon. So that's an excellent start. Uh, and then what should we add to this compound? I think water. Let's give that a shot. Well, what would be the name of the reaction that would take, that would take place between these? Hydration. This would be a very specific reaction. Anyone have any ideas about what type of reaction is now going to take place? Hydro. Anything else? No, I think <laughs> those are names that we would usually use when we're attacking alkenes. Oh, right. Hydroborage. Or even if we don't know the name, just what's going to happen here? Well, they come attack carbon one and then kick off bromine. Yeah. And then the other water will just deprotonate. Sounds good. Okay. And what type of reaction is that? So it's an acting as a nucleophile, nucleophilic substitution. Excellent. That's right. So the problem is, I think at first you guys were thinking in terms of addition reactions, but we're not attacking the double bond. Yeah. So we should be thinking of this as a substitution. Well, what substitution is it? 
there's a couple different types of substitution reactions you guys have learned. So we want SN2, right? This is going to be SN2. Well, what do you think? Would Plus this give us an SN1 or an SN2? And that is a or That's right. Why don't we confirm that though in the, uh, do you guys have the SN2 handouts with you? It's really important to know. Right I don't have, I mean, I don't have your actual, it's really an awesome chart. Do you guys have those with you? No. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So we're looking at the table at the bottom of page three. Right, although that's not, we don't want to create a double bond, but we have to make sure the reagents are going to do what we want here. Well, let's go through that. So which row are we going to be in? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Secondary. Yeah, so we should label our alpha carbon. Here's the alpha carbon, the one with the leaving group. So we're going to be in the row for secondary alpha carbons. Okay. And then who's our nucleophilic atom? The water. Water. That's the molecule, but we need to specify oh, the, the oxygen. oxygen. The lone pair on the oxygen. And we need to be even more specific, neutral or negative oxygen. The lone pair on the neutral oxygen. There you go. <laughs> so we need to find the column that has a neutral oxygen in it. Mm -hmm. Not a negative oxygen, but the neutral oxygen. Okay. Uh, and then that would put us in the SN1E1 cell okay. over here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but if you look down below the table, it reminds you that when you get SN1 and E1, it's usually 95% SN1 and only 5% E1. So we basically, typically disregard the E1. And he said he won't, he won't give us a problem where we have to choose between the two. Good. Because it's too overlapping. The one thing he might give you is that if there's heat, then, then E1 yeah, will dominate. Okay. But without heat, we're going to expect the SN1 to dominate. So we'll just treat this like an SN1 reaction. So that's something else that I would recommend doing. You will, see, you will definitely see SN1 and SN2 and E1 and E2 problems on the exam. Those are hard. The, really, the only way to get them right, right is to have internalized that table. That's a pretty complicated table, but you basically have to have that internalized to, to get those problems right. But you were focusing on the right things. Um, the most useful thing is that we have a poor nucleophile. Since this is a poor nucleophile, it can't possibly be SN2 or E2. Um, and we have a secondary, which allows us to do an SN1. So the bromine is going to leave first. Very yeah. good. So mm -hmm. let's, let's actually draw that mechanism. Let's right. draw the mechanism. Okay. That's a crucial mechanism to know how to draw. Yeah, the carbon with the leaving group. That's right. That's what you look up in the table because that's the carbon that's participating in the reaction. Okay. Because it's just attached to the other two carbons, right? Yeah, it's secondary because it's attached to yeah. two other carbon chains. Mm -hmm. A primary carbon is attached to one other carbon chain, yeah, yeah. a secondary is yeah. attached to two, and a tertiary to three. That's good. This is a hard mechanism for some people. SN1 and E1 can be hard because it feels weird to have the leaving group leave on its own. Yeah. But yeah. it can leave on its own because it's leaving behind a stabilized carbocation. What's stabilizing this? Well, it's secondary. But so there's something else that's stabilizing this carbocation. Why is this an unusually stable carbocation? They overlink. Yeah. Yeah, how does the fact that it's allylic stabilize it? It's overlapping. Resonance. 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 There you go. <laughs> 
We could draw another resonance structure where the positive charge is on this carbon. We don't need to bother drawing that, but there is another resonance structure where the positive charge is over here that stabilizes that positive charge. So even a normal secondary carbon can, uh, can do an SN1, and an analytic one can definitely do an SN1 because it's got an especially stabilized carbocation. Uh, now the water comes in, and it's good that you saw that that would leave you with the charge. So it is something to be happy about to get those charges right. And we know that what happens if you do the main reaction and you still have a charge? Well, then you should gain or lose a proton to get rid of that charge. Um, and at this point, you could use either the water or the bromine to take off the proton. So using the water here was fine. And that does give us the product that we were trying to get all along. So that's right. And uh, I think you, had, you actually worked that out. You had uh, both steps correct. 